Hello again. This is Ed French, and uh, this is lesson 16, brushwork. It's the um, the thing that people see, the surface of your art, and uh, there's some fabulous things that have been done over the over the centuries with brushwork. Um, and I'm going to divide this into um, three sections, brushes, palette knives, and um, miscellaneous tools like sponges, paper towels, things like that. Uh, brushwork is like the shingles on a roof of a house or the siding and the paint. It's what people immediately see. Uh, on top of basic um, good uh, design and drawing, um, good art as a foundation, there's been some awesome things done. So we'll go into this. Here we go. Just showing uh, different ways of applying paint, painting. I guess you would call this normal, just putting in detail. I'm leaving it in the abstract, simply so that we concentrate on the uh, the act of brushing rather than getting into a subject matter this would be called scumbling and uh, I think it was about 1837 Alfred Jacob Miller painted uh, mountain men at the rendezvous in what is now Wyoming. He came back to, I think it was New Orleans, and discovered somebody was, the rage was scumbling. And um, Scumbling was, I guess you might say, revived in the 1960s with acrylic, which is what this paint is. Um, and um, it was the style for probably 20 years at least. A lot of illustrations in magazines showed scumbling in them. This is a fan brush and this is on a little different paper. It shows uh, texture of scumbling a little better. The fan brush does all kinds of neat things. This is a Fitch brush, makes triangular like marks. This is getting, a brush is getting old, but it, 
when they're brand new they'll make uh, neat uh, triangular shapes this is acrylic uh, Liquitex acrylic This is a bristle brush. Just different kinds of different ways of applying paint. This is a Dynasty brush from Thailand. Not expensive. Might call that printing. I'll show a little more of that later. Dabbing. What do we want to call it? I use this kind of brush a lot. This is called a liner brush. And I'm using a bridge with it to make straight lines. Also, this kind of brush the liner is great for making tree branches, limbs, flower stems. It's kind of a, you might say, an obedient brush in that it, and I'm not trying to be real careful with it, but here it, um, it follows because of the long, um, bristles it follows your hand very easily here's an inexpensive hog hair bristle And here's an old toothbrush for spattering. Here is a soft brush, especially useful in, in the blending oils. very soft. I don't know what it's made out of, but uh, it's a natural brush.
and uh, here's a little something I do with a palette knife that I like. I think it's pretty cool. I have uh, at least four palette knives. I have a really big one actually. It's a kitchen knife. But here's some things that can be done with them. And I've learned over the years to use a palette knife pretty extensively, especially where there's a lot of texture, like bark of a tree or grass or... things like that. Rocks, lichens, um, lichens on rocks. This is called mono printing. And it means just uh, one one dab. It does some pretty neat stuff. These might be what you'd call miscellaneous tools. Here's a sponge. Does great lichens on rocks. Whoops, excuse me. Turkey feather. Turkeys shed their feathers around here. I helped one shed all these feathers once. And uh, a paper towel can also be used to lift and wipe things up. So that's some miscellaneous tools, and uh, all these things put together um, with good. Like I said, uh, good uh, drawing and good, good design can make some, some neat paintings.